First of all, I want to thank the meeting organizers for asking me to speak today on this very important topic of peripheral arterial disease uh, and the Pantheris device. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. Um, let's get right into the case. Uh, case number one is a 78-year-old male uh, who presented with, as you can see from the pictures, uh, a previous second-digit amputation and dry gangrene on the dorsum of the second and third digits. Uh, he'd had two previous interventions uh, below the knee. Uh, he would reocluded and his wounds were getting worse. Uh, so we brought him in to perform an angiogram. Uh, you can see from the angiographic images uh, on the screen that uh, he had a long segment anterior tibial artery chronic total occlusion. Um, and again, he had been treated previously twice below the knee. This artery had been opened. Uh, and at that time it was performed with rotational atherectomy and angioplasty. So some of it certainly is residual atheromatous plaque, and some of the reason for the CTO is also fibrous scar formation. So we we're gonna have two different, at least two different morphologies of plaque to deal with uh, in a, a 3.5 to 3.0 millimeter vessel. So we chose the Pantheris SV device, the small vessel device, um, which is designed for use below the knee. Uh, and I think you're gonna be able to see on the images that it was very effective, very safe, but also very effective in that the jog on the atherectomy device was sufficient to engage plaque in a vessel of that size without imparting added risk of a deep cut. Um, so the, the Panthera small vessel design, device was the, the cornerstone of this particular intervention and has been, for our practice, the mainstay of our use of Pantheris because we treat primarily critical limb ischemia, patients that have uh, distal disease. We use the large vessel device when we have the SFA lesions, but so far our, our primary device has been the SV device for tibials. So uh, you'll see on the screen some of the images that we obtained as we were performing the atherectomy. You can see there's heterogeneous material within the plaque. Uh, there are fibrous segments and, that are thick. And then there are other segments that have a thin layer of, of fibrous plaque with a lipid core at the base. Um, as you can see from the next set of Pantheris images, you can see a trough uh, adjacent to where we cut. And that shows you what plaque we were actually able to debulk from this anterior tibial artery. Now, before we did the Pantheris, we did perform IVUS, uh, and we were able to determine that the size of the vessel approximately was uh, 3.5 millimeters and tapered down distally to 3.0 millimeters. Um, and the visualization uh, with the optical coherence tomography, even in a vessel of this size, was really revolutionary for me. Um, much better than the imaging that we get with uh, traditional IVUS. Uh, and then the ability to actually excise that plaque in a directional fashion um, made this case unique amongst the three that we've done for this patient so far. Um, and you're going to get to see a video here in a moment as we're going through and excising some of the more uh, proximal plaque. Uh, you can see the device moving down, uh, engaging the plaque under direct visualization. And you can see how aggressive we were able to get because the, the line, the medial adventitional line, the, the border of that internal elastic membrane is clearly visible on the OCT. And you can see me take the device right up to the edge and get the maximum caliber out of this vessel, um, which again had been treated previously with atherectomy and angioplasty, but there was still, as you can see, a tremendous amount of residual atheromatous plaque uh, that was a good target for us. So um, the next images on the screen show examples of the debris and the plaque that was removed. Uh, these uh, samples were then subjected to histological analysis and there was trace medial component. I just showed you the, the cut that we got the trace medial component with, which was a, a moderately deep cut. But most importantly, there was no adventitial component. There were no uh, aggressive deep cuts that went past the external elastic lamina. And the consequence of, of violating that external elastic lamina are not insignificant. Um, in a study out of Mount Sinai from three years ago, it showed that, that 90 plus percent of the patients that get a deep cut that have, in, that have external elastic lamina in the histological sample, that greater than 90% have 
a significant restenosis requiring reintervention at one year. Uh, so avoiding that deep cut is really important, but as we've talked about, in this patient, he really did need debulking. He'd had previous plaque modifying procedures, but he had not had a debulking procedure. Uh, these are just some histological slides showing the different components. And then this video shows a very interesting finding as we're going down. You'll be able to see a rind of uh, darker material of uh, hypolucent material, and that's a lipid core, all right? A lipid core can be seen on IVUS as well. What I had not previously appreciated was that with the Pantheris device, we can cut down to the lipid core safely and effectively and remove the lipid core. I had previously avoided any contact with the lipid core because I wasn't able to visualize exactly what I was getting into. The, in this case, I actually went in, excised the lipid core and, and did so without, without any fear of distal embolization or thrombosis. And those are the histological examples. And now the slides that you'll see are the before and after images. Now, what is remarkable about these before and after images, not so much that there was no anterior tibial artery before and now there is an anterior tibial artery. We all see that every day, right? You can, you can open up a tibial artery. What's extraordinary about these images is that this is atherectomy alone. There's no post-atherectomy balloon on this case. And I will tell you that that's probably the only case in the last two years that I haven't followed an atherectomy device with a balloon. But if you look at that final image and how that anterior tibial artery looks like the native vessel, and there are collaterals coming off of that artery, I could not justify placing a balloon down there and risking a potential dissection. We did ath standalone atherectomy and got that outcome. That is, in, in my experience, very unique. Um, as I said, when I treat tibials, it's, it's, this is the only case that I've ever done an atherectomy on a tibial and not followed it with a balloon and, and look at that result. Um, so in, in summary, what I will say is that uh, the small vessel Pantheris device in this patient allowed us to do a much more aggressive debulking procedure below the knee with a tremendous degree of safety and comfort. Uh, not, not really risking going too deep or getting a device stuck because we were watching what we were cutting out the entire time. Uh, and the patient had obviously great pulses at the end and subsequent to this, I can tell you that he's been able to heal his wounds. Um, he's had a great outcome. Uh, hopefully at the next meeting, I'll be able to come back with one year patency data on this single patient, which obviously won't be very robust from a statistical standpoint, but from, uh, from a, a good, good summary, you know, anecdotal standpoint, I think that'll be a powerful uh, piece of information to pass on. So again, thanks for having me uh, here today. Uh, if there's any questions, we can take those during the question period.